the day still in my jammies and I even managed to lay down and take a really quick like 20 minute nap it's been a long day I hope your day has been really lovely and those of you on the west coast still have a lot of time left in your day to make it good so hopefully that'll work out well so in case this is your first rodeo of the day <laughs> vegan rodeo of course vegan cooking um, vegan for everyone is an ebook written by I don't know like 40 different influencers and contributors and recipe developers like me and it's only on sale for five days today's the last day I think you get to like one o'clock Eastern time or maybe a little longer because um, Amy is on Pacific Standard Time so we'll see what happens but I know you're gonna be mad at me if I didn't do all this you'd be like why didn't you tell me it was not gonna be here anymore so I'm telling you but I'm also cooking for Cheryl and making us some dinners and it's been just a I swear I have been cooking non-stop for the past four days so I was like why not keep it going we are gonna make Christina Sloggett's or otherwise known as Spa Betty we're gonna make her spicy fried cauliflower it, you it's already air fried and not deep fried so one of the reasons I'm telling you about some of these recipes are really twofold one is to show you how you can take a vegan recipe and make it whole food plant-based no oil or SOS right there's lots of different things this would be one that isn't perfect for sofas free people but we can talk about that too um, oh Joanne loves cauliflower yes indeed um, hi and one anti-venom oh and Diana bought the book that's awesome um, yes yeah, some of it's made with oil just like I said and telling me it's sad isn't really helping anything because my recipes are oil free. So if you feel like it's not in your wheelhouse, we had this conversation earlier today. You're getting a little bit of cranky Kathy along with the pumpkin pajamas. <laughs> Is that it's okay if things are for other people and not for us. For instance, some people can eat nuts and seeds and meet all their dietary and health goals and some people have trouble doing that. You shouldn't tell people not to eat seeds and you shouldn't tell people to eat seeds so I do neither and what I do is show you how to make things for your own dietary needs so snowy girl it sounds like this is not the book for you and that's okay there are plenty of other books out there what I am telling you since most of my audience is whole food plant-based no oil and even if you're not interested in this book this gives you a few tips on how to change some of your fa favorite recipes to have no oil right so that's awesome um, and Amy's here see there's Amy's little smiling face who put this all together Vivian says three times today such a treat um, all in pumpkin pajamas so yes it was a treat for me and hi Justine Oh, CJ in Scotland had cauliflower with their dinner. Oh, hey, Marilyn. I just love, um, I just love, love, love cauliflower. And um, we can talk about some entryways into cauliflower if you don't like it, though this would be a really good one. Ooh, Justine puts rice cauliflower in her oatmeal every morning. You win. That's a win all in of itself. Um, So let's see. Yay, Carol caught a live show. <laughs> Gina says, I love you. You're so real. Yes, I am. I, I have no other way to be. Oh, it's pouring in Oregon. It's, it's kind of been cloudy. Not super cool. It's been like 79, 80 degrees today. And hey, Lydia. <laughs> Okay, Snowy Girl already bought it, so hopefully you're learning what you need to learn to make the recipes without oil. Um, it's pretty easy. This one, oh, th thank you. I just like had to people so many times in a row. And last week, and we were at Chef AJ's Live Your Best Life conference, which was awesome. 
but I'm an introvert. I think I need to be in my jammies for like the next month. Uh, all right, yeah, any recipe can be modified to fit our way of eating. And there are very few diet specificity, spe specifics, I'll just make that easy on myself, that can't be changed around a little bit. Now, when you take flour out of it, when your sofa's free, there are some things that are harder and need bigger, like workarounds, but almost everything can do. Um, and sh I don't think apple's on. Yeah, cauliflower is amazing. And Kathy, I do the same thing. When I look at a recipe, I just read over the oil and very and hardly notice it. And most of the things. And see, yeah, Joanne also thinks you're like a rock star, Justine. Justine, guys, I can tell I haven't had enough sleep, and it's my third live. Hey, Mary Cooper, I haven't seen you in a long time. It's cold and rainy in Boston. Pouring in Seattle. I, I love that. And Mona says, curious if the soup you made earlier could be frozen or canned. So that was the tomato broth soup with um, shells. I think it could. It's going to depend on the shells you used. I used chickpea shells, so I think they will hold up. Cheryl ate more of it, like we did that as our main meal, which I thought we were going to not be so lazy. So I don't know if we'll freeze it. If we do, I'll let you know. But I think it's worth a try. Um, oh, hi, Amber. Thank you so much. And Lydia loves the book. And uh, Boston Vegan Bean just bought the book. I got my jammies at Marshall's because I've been Halloween shopping at Marshall's, TJ Maxx, and Home Goods. And though they do not sponsor me, I'm available. Should they want to sponsor me? I spent so much money there this past month. Um, and the King's Child is here. Yeah, I was really happy. I mean, I think Cheryl was expecting something slightly different. It is its own specific thing, this um, Mexican tomato soup with noodles. So it's more of like a chicken broth Obviously, we're doing vegan chicken broth with my vegan chicken bouillon um, with a, flavored lightly with tomatoes versus like, let's say, Campbell's soup that most Americans grew up with. That's very tomato pasty, thick tomato taste with a little bit of milky taste along with it. Um, it was different. I would eat it again. I would a thousand percent recommend to squeeze that lime. I tasted it without the lime, but then when I put the lime in, it really sang. So, oh, and that's right. In Cheryl's second bowl, she went ahead and put some frozen mixed veggies. So she likes the kids' mixed veggies, those um, diced carrots, corn, peas, and green beans. So she put those in and heated it up, and she really liked it like that. I am indeed still in my jack-o'-lantern pajamas. So there's like light orange and dark orange striped happy faced jack-o'-lanterns on a black background oh you are so sweet i appreciate all of you guys it was so sweet of you to ask me to come hang out okay let's see yeah the soup was good and lisa says it's still hot and humid in florida it's it's kind of hot and humid here so i really appreciate that these pajamas usually halloween pajamas are like super cozy which could be good except it's been 80 degrees so these are pajamas i can wear in the 80 degrees oh mona loves marshalls and home goods i find all the best things <laughs> i have no idea how you contact marshalls and tj maxx to let them know we want you to be sponsored but um if i find out or if any of you guys have contacts i'm I'm in it because seriously, I have probably on the di dining room table that you guys don't see over there is piled with Halloween dishes and cool things like that that I bought this month. <laughs> Joanne says, I can't believe you would spend money on Halloween stuff. And she's just kidding. She's teasing me. Um, she knows that I am like aspiring queen of Halloween. Oh, and Mona saying, uh, not Mona, sorry, 
Marilyn's telling Mona, pasta cannot be pressure canned. Marilyn knows a lot about pressure canning, so if you had some questions, you could ask her in the comments. Starch interferes with heat transfer, that makes sense. Um, Snowy Girl says, I made your chicken stock powder. So earlier today we talked about my wet bouillon, um, which is like broth concentrate cubes, right? That I put, I make a big batch of, I put in ice cube trays, and then I put it in a Ziploc. And I make a few months, or depends if it's soup season or not, I make anywhere from three to six months at a time. I also, on HealthySlowCooking.com, have two dry ones. I have a chicken dry one and I have a mushroom dry one. Uh, not a, well, it is mushroom, but it's beefy. It has some ancho, it has some tomato powder. Um, and she said, I put one tablespoon per one cup of water. Is that too much? It was a bit strong tasting. It could vary depending to your very specific taste. So I like to, when I'm working with something like that, next time, if it was you, I would put one teaspoon in, mix it, taste it second teaspoon in, mix it, taste it, and see if that's where you want to stop. Um, yeah, Home Goods is the best, isn't it? I'm trying to, I'm looking around. Ooh, I, actually, I got some big OXO um, sauce slash dressing containers there the other day. And th I love those. We're going to make our sauces in these. Um, okay. Ooh, Sandra bought a huge ceramic pumpkin at Wegmans a few days ago. You know, once Halloween is in the store, all budgeting is out the window for me. All right, so there's a couple of steps in this. So first, I, I wanna show you kind of my slightly cleaned up. So if you notice, there's some very white shiny spots. I've, I've washed it as well, but this was in there for a little while. So that means I cut off some little pieces of mold. Now that's not always the thing to do with every vegetable. But cauliflower is kind of hard, so you really can cut out that part. Um, and sometimes if you see a cauliflower on sale, it will look like this because someone else did it for you. Okay, so we're gonna cut this into florets. We're gonna make a very light batter with just gluten-free all purpose flour. Gluten flour. You could use gluten-y all-purpose flour. You could use whole wheat pastry flour probably. You probably could even use brown rice flour, honestly. I'm going to use a little Bob's Red Mill 1 to 1, which has sweet white rice flour, whole grain brown rice flour, potato starch, whole grain sorghum flour, tapioca flour, and xanthan gum. And so you do what feels good to you and resonates well. We're going to just use a little bit of almond milk with that, a couple of spices, and then we're going to put the pieces into the batter. So one thing I don't think we've talked about in a while is this Joy. Um, they have an almond and a cashew milk. This is the almond milk base. Literally the only ingredient, oh, am I gonna find it in time to show you, is almonds. That's it. So basically it is almond butter. So therefore there is a film of oil on the top. So they say, what do they say? One to two tablespoons for every one cup of water. We're gonna use about how much? A half a cup? So I'm just gonna kind of get some of the stuff down the bottom. I should really mix it in better, but you know, this is a little real, real life cooking. And basically, that seems like a lot. One, two, double it. And you could use any non-dairy milk that you have. So I'm gonna put two in there, and then I'm just gonna put about a cup of water. Let's see, go a little bit down below the one. You could do this with just regular almond butter that you buy at the store, but what you'll see is it's just, this is really finely, finely blended. It's some sort of special industrial machine. So you don't have to like Joy. Joy also has an, an oat milk powder that's just oats. So that's something else that you might be interested in. 
or use your own homemade milks. Um, and don't forget, you guys, once, once I, this will be my last live for the day. If you're feeling lonely after this, the whole class, the whole, uh, it's a two hours and 45 minute class on milk makers where I'm giving samples out to everyone and making different things is there too. So you can learn how to make some at home. We're just blending it. Okay, so see, it's just quick and easy. I have, I'm not buying a lot of it currently, but some of it had gone on sale, so I still have some. So I'll use it off and on. Now I am on Dr. McDougall's program and I'm currently, I would say not eating nuts or very much limiting nuts. That's not really the case with just like a regular milk strength kind of thing. I'm, I'm also not drinking a quart a day or something like that either. Oh, that's hilarious. I was watching plant stock too. I missed a lot of it. Actually, I missed almost all of it on Saturday. So it's, yeah, I didn't even think about that. You, that's what, cause I'm like, why are you guys all watching today? I'm very happy. I love having you here, but I, I just don't know that I'm that interesting, but I appreciate that you're hanging out. So what we're gonna do is so simple, is we're gonna take a half a cup, I'm double checking because like I said, I was up at like six this morning, so I'm a little sleepy. And I may actually go to bed after dinner. Again, silk it. Now, if somehow this turns out too thin, I will put more flour in it. If somehow it's too thick, I will put extra milk in it. So it's pretty easy. Okay, so I'm going to get, how much we want a half a cup of almond milk? I'm just going to measure this out like I'm paying good attention. And I'm just going to have everything measured out and we'll cut the cauliflower up and then mix it together. Also, I'm going to go ahead and preheat the air fryer to 400 because the Breville preheats, not all of them preheat. You know, that's a good question. So Justine's saying, is the fat content enjoy? Because I will tell you this right now, and I told it in the class, there is no way without like kitchen scientist equipment that you can tell how much fat and calories are in your homemade almond milk. Depends on how fine your strainer was, how good you blended it, what went in and what didn't. So milk is one of the things that I never put any nutritional value to. Um, this is saying, and see, this is just talking about the butter. So one tablespoon of the butter is 94 calories and 84, uh, not 80, 8 grams of fat. So you that could be, so if I use two, so there were 16 grams of fat. So it was 8 grams of fat per half cup. And it, it is true, this is a whole food, whereas when you make it at home and strain it, it gets iffy for some people. I'm good with it. Use your pulp and something else. Um, so there you go. Hopefully that helps. But the reason they can give you that is that this is a butter. So at the butter level, I don't know. I'm assuming they're not straining anything out, but I don't know. I think it's just so industrial that it's, it's smooth, smooth, smooth. Alrighty. So we've got these things. The only other thing I want to get, I don't have any smoked paprika out right now. So I have, it says smoked paprika, but it's regular. I messed up a while ago and, and I had to switch the labels. <laughs> so I'm probably going to put a little liquid smoke in here. Or I'm going to do some smoky flavor in the sauce. Now, also ask for a half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, and I am leaving that out because Cheryl. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside. We're going to break this down into some florets. 
And this is my that fancy dancy Naki, Nakano knife. And I've really been enjoying it. I wasn't sure when they asked about sending it to me to try, but I've really been enjoying it. And I have a knife that really needs to be sharpened. I have a whetstone and I've sharpened other knives, but this one knife did not sharpen at all with it. And I did exactly the same thing, so I'm a little, I'm a little baffled. So I was happy to have this nice sharp knife. Now, what you have left, you can make, you can cook more of your stems, but this, if I wanted to, I could um, shred it and put it in cruciferous crunch. just like we do with broccoli stems. And also I could sit aside in case I cut any, I don't have a lot of longer stems, but if I wanted to cut some of those stems off, I could. And I'm just gonna go and cut these into bite-sized pieces, one hopes, of about the same size. Why did I say that so suspiciously? Because it's not always it's not always perfect. That's why we call it dinner and not art. <laughs> you know, don't stress about making this. Like Cheryl will literally pull it up and start looking at it. And I'm like, it'll be okay. Maybe some of these we pull out before the others, right? That's not, such, that's not the worst thing that's gonna happen to us in our lives. And just know, like, see this, a couple of little pieces just broke off. Let you see from above. And if one's ready, and also even, see there's a little tiny piece of ick there. And so I'm just gonna get out. As you get down into the cauliflower, the older it is, the more surprises you may find. This, I'm making bigger pieces, but it has less cauliflower to it because it, it's real short, like me. That is my air fryer going, hey, if you wanted to fry something, now's the time. All right, so that was that. That was the supposed hard part. And it's okay that it's not perfect. Let me come in. Any pulp, I make my milks and almond. I'm not sure what you mean, Dee. Can you use frozen florets? That's a great um, question. And I believe you can. I do believe you can. Um, I've done it, I've had people do it with my Cajun cauliflower poor boy, which is made similarly with less, so I'm just gonna mix this in together. And if you wanted to add some salt in here, you could, but we're gonna make a sauce to coat it in. All right, so I'm just mixing those spices in. I think I would thaw it some what I do in it, so I don't use a batter like we're doing now. I actually have the wet cauliflower and a dry mix, and I let it kind of, it's almost like it has a thick dry rub on it, and I recommend putting it on bread with a big sauce, or on a salad with a big sauce, like a, a whole food plant-based no oil ranch dressing. Um, so if you roast it, it kind of helps some of that moisture to come out and then it holds together a little bit more. It's probably gonna cook in a lot less time as well. So, and Justine says, I wish I loved frozen veggies more. I can't get past the texture change and they're all, they are watery. So one of the things I do, so Cheryl has that Pampered Chef microwave thing that somehow, I don't like it because I don't like the way it fits in my, count, in my um in my drawer with all my other cooking pans. Chef AJ loves it too, but it has a little strainer, so you, you steam it, you strain it out, and then like a lot of times I'll do the, the Normandy mix, which is just broccoli, cauliflower, baby orange carrots, and yellow carrots. 
I will toss that with some nutritional yeast, a little bit of salt, sometimes smoked salt or a little bit of liquid smoke. You can put some other spice blends in there and mix it all in together and then it kind of makes a sauce and it makes it a little better for me personally. Yeah. And you know, it's okay. I, to me, it depends on, is it cheaper to buy fresh? So like that big one I got, I got per piece, not per pound. And that changes my feelings about, um, <laughs> about fresh cauliflower a lot. And I'm gonna see there's a lot left in here. So let's get our spatula. Joy is expensive, leave no drops of it. And that's like a cup, that's a teaspoon or two and all the nice froth. If you are not doing nuts again, you could use oat milk and that should work fine too. Okay, and we may need to do this more than once, but we'll get this mixed up first and we'll see. This is the amount that work actually called for. Let's get you go back, oh, not that far. And I think it needs a little more milk. So it could be my milk was a little thicker than, you know, the other almond milk or a little richer, who knows. I'm gonna try three, which is not quite. Okay, I'm gonna do a fourth one. because we want it to be loose enough that it can still go on and get coated. Now there's another step I'm gonna do too that she doesn't talk about. I'm gonna put some parchment paper down. And this is just my Breville air fryer tray. I think I might like one more. I guess I'm, she doesn't say how thick it should be. I'm thinking it should be a little closer to my thick pancake batter, which is thicker than most people's. So I'll show you what I'm kind of going for. And then we'll see if I'm right or wrong. So see, now it's a little bit, see how it was really, really, I thought a little extra thick. And I did not get my parchment paper out. You guys are getting to see my new handy dandy parchment paper thing over and over again. I love it. It has a little um, thing that cuts it. And so you can get out just what you need. Which I think it's about there. Now the reason I want to do this is so I don't have to clean up a big mess. So I'm going to put this here. I'm going to let it bake some, then the top will firm up with the batter, then we can flip it over and let it just go crazy. Yeah, Amy says she has the Breville and she always uses the parchment. So there's some, there are covers over the um, heating elements down below, but they are just, they are just a bear to, to try and clean. They're just no fun at all. Um, oh no, Karen says, we made the mistake of buying cabbage without checking prices closely. I'm, that looks nice, but I think it could go a little bit more. I'm gonna get some tongs. So I don't have to go back and forth and wash my hands 70,000 times. I got new tongs. Guess where I got them. <laughs> We needed some tongs for our travel bag. So look, they're little Halloween spider webs. Yeah, I, I know it's hard to believe I'm as old as I am. And so I wanna get some batter in the nooks and crannies. And I think I want this batter to be a little bit thinner still. But we can see, we can try it this thick. Okay, and so if there's some little place like that that wasn't touching. We can just throw a bunch of pieces in, fish them around, mix it all in together. 
and we can always make more batter. That was the easiest thing we did. And so we're going to let it get nice and crispy. Then we're going to toss it into a sauce. And we're going to make two sauces for this. We're going to make um, Christina's sauce and or a version, an oil-free, whole food, plant-based version, are close enough. And then I think I want to make the bang bang sauce, like a whole food, plant-based, no oil, bang bang sauce, which I really like. And luckily for me, I don't have to be tempted by the vegan cauliflower near me anymore because they're not here anymore in Durham. I think this is kind of a nice coating. And we'll probably do two pans of this. So we'll, and I see some more. Um, <laughs> Justine says, Kathy, as you like to say, you're living your best life. I know, I've been saying it all day and I don't even know why. Maybe it is because I'm wearing pumpkin pajamas. I tell everyone, including cashiers, that we meet, that we are probably the most easily amused people. All Cheryl and I need is a place to wander around and look at things, and we are fine. <laughs> We're pretty happy. And see, I'm being a little lazy with some of this, and I'll try and be less lazy on the other one. I want you to at least get some, to see some cooked, so I'm trying not to cover every nook and cranny, but I think that you should. But isn't a jammy day a great day, though? I think it's an awesome day. Okay. Am I hiding that from you? I'm just really trying to fish that around. Turn it around a little bit. I would for sure double or plan on doing this, you know, one at a time. I'm going to make more batter. I don't think this is enough batter for a whole. I think this is about enough batter for this. And I will go ahead and get a little bit of batter, and paint this guy. I told you I wasn't going to do it. You knew I, did you guys make bets? Because you knew I wasn't going to be able to do this. Because then I'll be sad when I show you and you're like, why are there naked spots? And I don't want to say because I'm just being lazy. Okay. So we're going to put these in the Breville for 15 minutes, so 10 minutes, and then we're going to turn them, and we'll look at this too. Okay, so I'm going to put it about here. That's on the Breville at least. It tells you which level for different things. So if it's like air fry or bake or cookies or pizza or slow cook. And so we're going to do 10 minutes. It will take a little longer than 10 minutes because it's just going to reheat itself up. It'll probably take two minutes to do that. And I will cut some more parchment paper and then I'll make us some more batter so we can finish this, finish this up. And I think I ended up adding an extra quarter of a cup of milk. And it could be because I used Bob's Red Bell. So each flour that you use is going to soak up things differently. Oh, thank you. The King's Child says, there's no way you're lazy with three lives today. I know Home Goods, Marshalls, and TJ Maxx are the same company. They also own Sierra Trading and Ross. And I got the best cup at Ross. I'm very excited because I'm going to be taking some pictures for my potions and powders book that if fingers crossed, I can get out next month. Um, I am making some new recipes for it too, but I've been getting some cool stuff for it. Uh, what temperature, 400 degrees. You know how I managed to have such a tidy space with all these lives? Cheryl cleaned up after every single one of them, 100%. 
So Cheryl is the reason that these live <laughs> these lives are sponsored by Cheryl's Cleaning. <laughs> the name of this it's like Copco. Yeah, C O Y O U C O U Copia. Y O U C O P I A. And if you go on Amazon, you you can see this. I really like it. It was one of those things I was like, I'll take a chance on it and we'll see what happens. We love it. It fits great under the sink and all that. I know, doesn't Cheryl rock? We all need a Cheryl. She is a gem. Delia says, yay, Cheryl. The King's Child says, God bless you, Cheryl. Cheryl, is she even upstairs? Cheryl? Are you listening? I'm sorry, I fell oh, I'm sorry. She fell asleep from all the cleaning. Um, <laughs> all right, let's go back. Da da da. See what questions we have. I love Bang Bang Sauce. Me too. Um, I just use my fingers. Yeah, you know I would, but what happens is I get it all over the mouse. So I do, if I was just left to my own devices and not, not talking to you guys and having to deal with the mouse, I would be all up in it. But it's, it takes too much time for me to go back and wash my hands 17 times. Uh, oh, thank you, Debbie. I'm glad to see you here again. Uh, except for the vet visit. Did you get good news ab about the puppy's eye? Fingers crossed, Mona. Um, let's see. Okay, let's come back. So, video 1000 night says, what in the one to two sentences version of how is this fried? Is it air fried? Well, this is a whole food plant based and usually no oil show. So therefore nothing will ever be deep fried. It also didn't say deep fried cauliflower. It just said fried cauliflower. So, if you're used to calling an air fryer an air fryer and not an air cooker, that's where the fried comes from. Um, oh, Joanne has Harry Potter PJs to wear tonight. I am so excited. I want a picture just for me, not to share. Uh, <laughs> Cheryl had to take a nap because I worked her so hard today. That is the truth. All right, so let's get some more of that milk out. We, I'm going to measure out like three quarters of a cup. If I can remember where three quarters of the cup is on this one. There we go. Am I going to have three quarters of a cup? Possibly, possibly not. And you know what? If I don't, I'll just throw some water in there. It's not the end of the world. Because what do we put in here? Nut butter and water. <laughs> right? No one's, no one's going to die from this, I promise unless they're allergic to whatever's in your water. I am not a water specialist. <laughs> I feel like there's so many disclaimers we have to make about all the things now. All right, so we're going to put another. OK. Ooh, it's looking really nice in there, actually. I think I kind of like it, where the thickness that it was. I was thinking I might thin it out some. So. I've got half a cup of Bob's Red Mill, one to one, again, gluten-free. I'm going to put a teaspoon or a little more, actually, this is actually bigger measurement, but I'm good with that. What else do we have to put? We're not putting any cayenne pepper in it. We're making that choice because Cheryl's helped us. I'm still trying to mix in some of the spice together. And it's a little weird right now because we've got old, old batter, new batter. And if I've added too much non-dairy milk, I will just add some more flour. If it's too thick, I will once again add water or non-dairy milk, depending on what we have right around us. How this looks like. This looks pretty much like exactly the same batter. 
for me in the mixture I chose, I would definitely use more than a half a cup of non-dairy milk. So you guys try it and see what you think. I'm gonna put all these guys in here. Maybe I should have left a bigger working area. What do you think? And then about the time this is ready, I think it'll be ready for me to turn over the others. But a lot of times when I'm thinking about doing something like this with a batter, I'm like, oh, it's so much work. It's so hard. It's not really. This, is, this was a one bowl sort of situation. And it won't even be that hard to clean it up. And so Christina's recipe doesn't have oil in this part. She has oil in the buffalo sauce. And that's what we're changing up. Though, as we see, I am likely to change things up in other ways. Okay. And I gotta say, some, I have been kind of wanting something crispy, crunchy, and I feel good about that crispy, crunchy being cauliflower or potatoes or something like that. And Jesse says it's time consuming more than hard, but really, I've just been yammering on to you guys. I could have actually broken down this cauliflower pretty fast without talking about it. Sometimes when I get on a live, it, a recipe that would take me 20 minutes to put together takes 45. Let's see if I can just get these smushed around. And if you have extra batter, we can put it on top of something like we, like we, ooh, did you guys see that? That was embarrassing. I wasn't looking at it and I just left it behind in the bowl, went to drop it off over here on the sheet and I'm like, why, why do I have nothing? Why is it nothing that I have? Oh, Daria says such a nice way to relax after a long day of work, watching someone else cook. You know, there. I love watching other people cook. It's just usually it's me cooking. And see, we can kind of make these into, take these little tiny pieces and put them with bigger pieces to kind of make a similar cooking time. But again, is that really what we're going to worry about? I don't think so. And I also need to grab another bowl because we will not be tossing cauliflower and sauces in this batter laden one. But yeah, when we first came home from um, the conference, Max was still staying where he gets boarded. And so Fergus was able to come into the bedroom with us and he was horrible. He literally four or five times during the night. Guy came up right at my ear and went, meow! <laughs> and I woke up going, ah! <laughs> so I feel like we just have not caught up on our sleep <laughs> yet from going somewhere. Okay, I'm gonna set this over here. I'm gonna grab a couple of things I can toss in. we should be close I'm gonna go ahead and turn them over I don't know that it's gonna take quite as long but we'll see I'll let you see how the coating setting up so nice I mean I feel really good about these can you kind of see there let's see if you can see Doo -doo -doo. You can kind of see a little bit there. And see how nice those are I'm going to get. Uh, I could clean off those original tongs. 
I just don't want to. And so you could either, and see how this comes up and look, there's not even a spot there. So you can either choose to turn this over or just you could turn this around. Now it will make it a little crispier. We'll also get more stuff on our um, air fryer and have to clean it. So, but let's do it the, the way I think will be tastiest. Then we're gonna cook it about another five minutes. And don't touch it with your hands like I am. The reason I'm doing that is that I have calluses and so I'm not being burned. So don't do it unless you, you are a professional or you just have really calloused hands <laughs> from something else. Okay, and see, it's got a nice here. I'm gonna take a little piece of this. This is just the batter that fell off. Mmm, hear it? I'm trying to crunch it near the microphone. And I find the one thing that's hard with um, whole food plant-based no oil is where do you get your crunch from? It's gonna fit in there. I'm gonna go ahead and do five minutes. And then we'll swap it out, take that one out and move the other one up higher. I know, it's so crunchy and good. So another thing I do is I, instant pot a whole bunch of those little baby potatoes and they're never all the same size they should be because they're all babies but they're like babies of all percentiles right the big babies and the little babies so i cut any in half or in quarters that need to to meet the smallest potato then i i think it's about five or six minutes that i do them in the instant pot on high cover i put at least a cup of water to steam them let them cool and I take wax paper, you could use parchment paper, and smash them. Then I put them on parchment paper, just like we did here, and let it cook about 400 degrees till I can safely flip them over. Also, when I smush them, I take it off and then I take like um, a saute spatula. And if you can get one, that, I don't know if our thin edged one, if you can get one that has a really thin edge, It'll go under and you can put it over because they're likely to try to fall apart. And then I cook them for a while, flip them over, cook them a little longer. I'll make them extra crispy if we're gonna eat them right now, or I will just make them a little less crispy and put them in the freezer. And then we'll heat them up and then they'll be perfectly crispy. I talked long enough for the recipe to go away. All right, so, in the sauce, let's see if I missed anything. I know, this is gonna be so good. Oh, I, if I were just cooking for myself only and not doing a video, I would not be using tongs. I, I would totally just be using my fingers to get all the stuff in and things like that. Um, Cheryl has been more active in the kitchen, Joanne, and hopefully it may not be till the end of October, but we're gonna do, start doing once a week where we do a live where she's cooking and I'm helping her with different recipes from my cookbooks and friends' cookbooks. So it is pretty awesome. Um, am I missing anything else? Oh, Christina's here, yay! So you guys go to Spa Betty and check out Christina's recipes. I was doing too many of the things. I should have emailed you. I love her. I love her recipes. They're so yummy. And I'm getting ready to de-oilize my version of your buffalo sauce. And I'm going to make um, a bang bang sauce. So the bang bang sauce is going to... Woo! I think you made me nervous, Christina. So... Um, and Christina, I did end up using a little bit extra non-dairy milk. Could it have been because I used Bob's Red Mill one-to-one? -one? Or is the batter supposed to be super extra thick? So that would be a good thing to know since you're here. 
Now I'm going to take this Kite Hill, this expensive Kite Hill unsweetened almond. And all that's in here is almond milk, starch, citrus fiber, locust bean gum, xanthan gum, and live active cultures. It's the cleanest. It's the only one without coconut in it. If you're on doing like McDougal or another whole food plant-based, no oil, SOS, SOFAS diet, this could be a winner for you depending. And it's pretty thick. So this is what I make my ranch dressing with for sure. I love it. So I got, you can't use all three trays unless you're dehydrating. So I use it to dehydrate herbs. So getting those extra air fryer baskets for your Breville is well worth it, Amy. And smashed potatoes are terrific, Alicia. It's awesome. Yeah, it is the crunch. I, I like a lot of crunch. Oh, you are the best. Um, all right, okay. Okay, I was wondering if it was, she was wondering if it was that I used Bob's Red Mill one-to-one -one or the Joy. So probably my milk might have been richer in, in the scale. We talk about that, like from, I talk about it in cow terms, because that's what we know, from skim to half and half. And it depends on how many almonds you put in there. So if you get a regular carton of almond milk, it probably had less almonds. So that's a good point. Um, Oh, that's funny. All right, let me look at Kite Hill is expensive, but I'm so thankful for it. I really like the yogurt and the cream cheese and the sour cream. Well, and I we use this like sour cream, just like this. We use the yogurt and it's, it, well, at least it used to be cheaper. Who knows what it is now? Yeah, sometimes things with a higher protein content will make it thicker. So, but I think it's good to know because not everybody's going to have all the same things. We will make a sauce, but um, I'm going to switch these around. These guys are done, so we'll let them cool for a minute somewhere while I'm making this sauce. You would think I don't have a whole kitchen to myself, but I do. Okay, and I need this guy. I'm going to put him back up here for about another six minutes and then we'll flip them okay so first I'm gonna make the bang bang sauce which is mine and I do want to show you so I have a couple of interesting shirachas this is one that I like a lot Oop. true made veggie shiracha have you guys seen that no sugar so it does have salt in it so if you're an SOS person, which means no sugar, salt, or oil, this is not gonna work for you. The sodium per one teaspoon is 30 milligrams, but it has tomato puree, jalapeno puree, butternut squash, carrots, garlic powder, vinegar, onion powder, salt, and cayenne pepper. And it's a very thin shiracha. It's almost like um, a hot sauce. And then, I got Sky Valley, because you know the, the rooster one is hard to get right now. So there's also the Sky Valley. I like their stuff a lot. And I got a pack of red and green, and it does taste pretty, pretty close to the same. And in here we have water, jalapeno pepper puree, distilled vinegar, cane sugar, cilantro, salt, tomatillo. It does have a tiny bit of oil in here, dried garlic, roasted garlic puree, lime juice concentrate, and xanthan gum. So we do, in our household, 90 to 90% whole food plant-based, no oil. Typically, any oil that comes, we're not going out and getting like French fries for our 5%, it comes in the form of condiments or something like that. Or maybe we had something that had a little coconut milk in it. Something like that is how we're doing it. Oh, yep. 
And I think that's it's similar. A lot of them have coconut in them, and we're really trying not to do coconut. Yeah, they have a, a North, they're actually, I think, a North Carolina, no, they're a Virginia company. And they have a North Carolina barbecue sauce. So like Texas barbecue sauce is tomatoey and rich. You know, there's all the different little subtleties, Kansas City. South Carolina barbecue sauce is mustard based. North Carolina sauce is vinegar based. So it's vinegar and tomato. So it's, it's interesting. Okay, so we're just gonna put some of this up and see if it shakes up or if I need to make up some more milk, but I think we'll do okay. I'm probably gonna put, what do we got, half a cup of the creamy goodness-ish. The world will not end if you don't get things perfect. And then I'm gonna put about a quarter cup and see, it's, well, it's just a little bit thicker. I think it, it, it's not quite as thin as I was thinking it was. This may or may not shake. Maybe we should have a show. Will it shake? And everything goes into the OXO dressing container. And it will. Can you hear it? Slap it around. And there's a couple reasons why I love these OXO containers. One is, do you see, it's really solid and sealed here. So I can just shake up and not have to be scared that stuff's gonna go everywhere. Also, they sit in your freezer or fridge very nicely. And I'm just gonna take a little taste. can't go spicier. It's a little spicy for Cheryl. So I may add a little bit more yogurt. I think because I'm not salt free, I'm going to add a little bit of salt in here. I think I want a little garlic powder, a little extra garlic powder. And if I can find my, did I put all those away? Garlic powder. Let's do a little onion powder. And by a little bit, I mean probably like an eighth of a teaspoon of onion powder, quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. And if you like things spicy, you could definitely spice it up more. And then I'm going to put probably half a teaspoon to th maybe three quarters of a teaspoon because I didn't put any salt in the um, batter. And you could always do my salt free plain blend, which is one tablespoon garlic powder, one tablespoon onion powder, one teaspoon ground celery seed mixed up well. I feel like I should be flipping it up in the air or do something really exciting. But, you know. And let's see, while I'm shaking, I'll see if there's the, um, you know, I get this at the grocery store, they have it here, but if you go and look, it is True Made Foods. And it's a veteran owned business. You could totally do this in your Ninja Blender. You could do this in a blender. I'm just being lazy and trying not to have more stuff for Cheryl to have to clean up. I'm just going to take a little taste. Yeah. And it's going to vary your sriracha to, and, and you could also use vegan mayo. You could use um, anything like that. You could use different hot sauces. You can make a Tabasco mayo with like a Cajun seasoning. So I'm going to try not say the, what I've been saying all day. And I'm going to turn off, put on that do not disturb. And um, Dee says I generally can get at least dry peppers. My peppers are frozen for the season. Still have jalapenos. 
Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff going on in my garden too, so it'll be interesting. Oh, you're so sweet. Dog Mom says, you know, I used to love watching America's Test Kitchen, but this, this is awesome. Walmart in my area has true made products. Thank you, Sherry. And it's kind of amazing what, what all Walmart has these days, because a lot of people do live in these places where Walmart's the only grocery store they can get to. So it makes me very happy. All right, so I talked long enough that these can cool off. And I'm gonna take a few of them. And let me see if I'm reading your, I don't even think I read your directions anymore. You're gonna kill me, Christina. Pour the sauce over the cauliflower and gently toss with tongs. And I have, do I want those tongs? I want those tongs. All right. So I'm gonna put half, about half of this and we'll put it with this sauce. And then I'm gonna make the other sauce. So I'm just gonna, Shake some around. And you can have as much sauce. You could put sauce on the side. And actually, I think I'm just gonna toss it with a wooden spoon. And this will be our bang bang sauce ones. And this is exactly how the fried ones looked at the restaurant that we used to go to. So I feel pretty good about this. And we would get extra sauce on the side. And while you're looking at this beautiful stuff going, why can't I have a bite? I'm gonna come over and I'm not gonna show you me flipping these off. Well, I guess I can, here we go. Instead of doing it over there, I'm gonna do it over here. And I'm just gonna take this and flip them off. And then put them back in for about five more minutes. We'll get this other sauce done and they'll be ready. And if you've got a new to you air fryer and you're like, I don't know what five minutes I should be doing, how do I know? My rule of thumb, and I've dealt with a bunch of different air fryers, you don't know do it five minutes check it five minutes check it five minutes check it then make a note on the recipe my new air fryer can do ten minutes and five minutes yeah doesn't this look awesome Let's see if you can see it down here oh. no that doesn't look awesome at all from that angle <laughs> here you go so of course, I have to take a bite, right? Where's the little bitty one? I don't want you guys to have to listen to me chew all day. Mmm. Oh, it's so good. The paprika in the batter really shows up a lot. Christina, I don't know if you heard. I didn't do the cayenne because Cheryl can't take anything spicy. I think this bang bang sauce will be like pushing it for her. Mmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's so good. Um, how does the Ninja compare to the Vitamix? I use both. Um, where did you buy your Vitamix? Do, is your warranty still good? Did you buy it at Costco? Because you can take it back 12 years later and they will still give you your money back and you can get another one. Um, yes, and Amy's saying, is it the motor of the blades? You can replace the pitcher, which comes with the blades. And in fact, you can get a whole thing where you can just replace the blades and the pitcher. I think they have to talk you through that. It started leaking. It could be by the blades or you could have a crack. At that, you might just need to get a new pitcher. And I would look in that too. Yes, it was awesome. Okay. Yes, smoke, smoke paprika is, I love everything smoky. And so what I was thinking I would do, okay, we're gonna make my version of Christina's buffalo sauce. So it usually has two tablespoons of melted vegan butter half a quarter cup vegan hoisin sauce, a quarter cup sriracha, and garlic. So 
I'm, I'm totally going off the range. And if it doesn't work, it is not her fault. It's only my fault. So I'm going to take some of this sriracha. And I am going to go for it. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I know Cheryl can have Texas peat. Sometimes you use Tabasco or Texas peat. Or some of the sauces may already have butter. So I'm going to take the Texas peat, which is a milder vinegar sauce. It's made in North Carolina. But it's comparable to Louisiana hot sauce versus Tabasco, which is spicier. So let's give this guy, because I think that's going to be about a quarter cup. Now, if I, and it is exactly a quarter cup, it was saying do this. I, Cheryl won't, doesn't like raw garlic anyhow. I'm going to blame everything on Cheryl. Where's my quarter teaspoon? Here's a half teaspoon. Three cloves, cloves of garlic. I'm going to do about a teaspoon of granulated garlic instead because I'm lazy. And I've got some vegan hoisin sauce. If you, and this one is gluten free, so you can buy gluten free. This is Lee Kim, Lee Kim McKee. Oh, and do I have a sweet sauce that Cheryl can have? Um, it isn't really a buffalo collie. The, the hoisin kind of makes it sweet. I think this will work. Um, what I would do, because I see what you're saying for sure. I just know the sriracha is going to be a little much. I'm going to put some of this hoisin sauce in there, and we'll talk about the ingredients. Just remember, you get to choose you. I'm going to do another quarter cup of the hoisin sauce. And this, it's not, depending on what your dietary path is, it may or may not be for you. Um, it has sugar, water, salt, distilled vinegar, soy flour, garlic, cornstarch. There's soybeans, caramel color, sesame oil. So there is, that's less than 2% in here of all those ingredients. Xanthan gum spices, citric acid. So if you can't have soybeans, you might just put a little bit of coconut aminos in there. It's not a one for one, but it's a good substitute, I think. And I'm gonna see how this is as is, but we can also add in two tablespoons of aquafaba, which I have in the freezer. But I'm just gonna shake this up and then we'll taste it. And let me see what, uh, yeah, Cholula is also good. That would be great. Oh, you like that one? Yeah, I'm so far since I've been doing McDougal, I've been able to eat some gluten, which has been fabulous, which will make me save dozens of dollars on sauces. <laughs> um, let's see if I've missed anything. And the only sweet sauce I have is like a sweet Thai chili sauce, and that would be really good on this. Do you know? There's everything it would be good on this. I would take some of this um, vegan yogurt. I think you could make a nice garam masala, kind of curry kind of dip in it, and that could be good. You can make, so there's a thing called Manchurian in Indian food, which is kind of, you know how we have American, American Chinese food? There's Indian Chinese food. So there are a lot of Indian population um, in our area. So we have dozens of Indian restaurants and groceries, but also some of the Chinese restaurants nearby serve um, this type of cuisine, which is delicious. And this would be really good. And you, you, it has kind of a sweet, so I'm trying to think of how to explain Indian Chinese. It's, it's kind of like ours. It's a little bit sweet a little extra spicy sometimes, but it has cumin in it. That's a spice they'll use a lot in it. Ooh, this is delicious. I don't, I, I kind of like the Texas peat with it. I know it's not exactly what you were going for, but it gives it some of that vinegar tang that we would have gotten from the sriracha without all the heat. Um, and again, if you've had Louisiana hot sauce, that's the best one-to-one -one Texas peat because I don't know if you can get it everywhere or not. Though there is a funny thing because 
the Texas Peak people got sued from someone from New York because it wasn't made in Texas. But Texas Pete was supposed to be someone's nickname. And I thought that was pretty funny too. People will sue over anything. Let's see, look, here's some more glorious ones. And if you have like a basket air fryer, you're gonna have to do these in batches. What I would suggest is either cook them, if you're doing a party, maybe cook them three quarters of the way toss them in, get them warm, then toss them in a sauce, and then just keep doing that as you want to bring out more. And Christina, if you have something you want to add, please let me know. And I'm sorry I didn't invite you to come on live. Um, we'll have to do something soon. Oh, okay, you thought I was just totally like going off the range. I am trying to keep to it, but like, so your spicy sauce is two tablespoons vegan butter, quarter cup ho vegan hoisin, quarter cup sriracha, and three cloves of garlic. So it's, it's pretty darn close. And if you wanted to make like a straight on buffalo sauce, you could just use Texas Pete, Tabasco, sriracha, Cholula. Put in your favorite hot sauce there. If, if you wanted to make it traditional, you put, put it with melted butter. But it's fine with aquafaba. That's gonna keep the thickness together. If you're not looking to keep it traditional, I mean, a bang bang sauce you can't go wrong with. You could put any of those hot sauces in with yogurt instead of sriracha. You could also just put, make it a nice buttermilk sauce. So you would, it's best if you do soy for this in particular. So you clabber the soy milk. So you put like maybe a cup of soy milk. You would put a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. Let it sit for five minutes and it starts looking clumpy and that's what we want so that's what makes um, the mouth feel of buttermilk so nice that's why that's why Americans love them some ranch dressing so we could do that and then put some um, some Tabasco in there maybe a little shot of Cajun seasoning there's just so many ways that you could do this Oh, Amy, you did not know there's a gluten-free vegan hoisin sauce. Yes, there is. I, I, we're lucky we have an Asian market, a couple of Asian, actually quite a few Asian markets now around here. So yeah, you can get it. Um, and the one thing that I have not been able to find in a gluten-free version that doesn't bother us today is black bean sauce, because I love a little jar of black bean sauce, but you can get fermented black beans and make it from there. But that is a delightful kind of instant meal. Take some either frozen green beans or fresh green beans, cook those and steam them, cut up uh, some extra firm tofu that you've pressed, or if you're lazy like me, the um, extra firm high protein tofu, which does not have anything added. It just has more water pushed out of it. So therefore it has more protein. It, yeah, it's a little bit kind of like sky magic. <laughs> but I think sometimes people are afraid to get that, that they think it might have some additives in it, but it doesn't. But it's like it's already pressed for you. I cut it into cubes put it on parchment, put it in the air fryer on 400 for 10 minutes, then move it around about five more minutes. And it'll, even if you don't put it in cornstarch, it'll get this nice skin around it. So now you have your green beans and maybe you put some other things in there. Maybe you lived it up, put some shredded carrots, maybe some shredded um, like kale salad mix or broccoli slaw. I'll do that a lot because this we're talking lazy girl dinner in a way. And then I'll put whatever bottled sauce, and we're talking black bean sauce here, could be teriyaki sauce. And there's a lot of these that are gluten-free. So make sure to go check that for my gluten-free people, okay? Now, if you're SOS, you're kind of SOS because there's gonna have sh salt and sugar in there. Sometimes they'll have a little oil, sometimes not. So if you're trying to do zero oil, trying to do something 100%, have my mad respect and you, there are a few out there and then I'm gonna have some recipes that are that way too okay and yeah Trader Joe's Thai sweet chili sauce would be amazing on this 
And Amy says, my friends and I are having a potluck next month and everyone is making a recipe from Vegan for Everyone. That's awesome. I think you totally should because it looks super time consuming, but it's really pretty quick. And honestly, other than putting away sauces that I showed you, and I'm doing two different, I've got three bowls because I'm doing a couple of different sauces and a blender. That's almost nothing. And um, video 1000 nights, I have the Instant Pot and the stainless steel has some burnt spots. It does not bother me, but you guys, Instant Pot also gets burn stains. Sometimes you will have hot spots on Instant Pots and slow cookers. Cheryl usually takes care of that because she's very good at meticulous things. I'm really good about getting all the things done. So she, whenever there's a big spot, cause she will just sit there for an hour and worry it until it's gone. She uses Barkeeper's Friend. Uh, I've also heard I'm using Branch Organics now and they have um, an oxygen boost powder. If you do water, uh, if you do some, spray some of the spray, put some of that on there and let it sit overnight, that should also help a little bit. Christina says, I love this new sauce you made. I'm going to have to try it. Oh, good. But I talked to Amy when I was going to do this because I didn't, and I didn't want anyone to be offended that I was making their recipes oil-free because it's not that I think oil-free is the only way. It's just I know a lot of my viewers are oil-free and I want them to feel like they have enough options to make what recipes they want to make. And, you know, don't forget, when you buy the book, you can always email me at kathyhester at gmail.com and I'll see what substitutes I can come up with. Um, someone emailed me about a few different ones. Amy had emailed me about, one person was saying no cream cheese, and I looked, and the pumpkin French toast is a little hard because there's cream cheese in there. There's some I think sour cream there's a few different things but you could make something like that oil free and I may go ahead and make my own recipe I may remake I did two French toast casseroles and vegan slow cooking for two and I was thinking of maybe remaking some of those soon guess what one will probably be pumpkin or butternut squash <laughs> and uh, yeah, I love the hoisin sauce because it has this kind of special flavor to it. And I love it when you have summer rolls, those soft rice paper that you roll up all the salads and noodles and tofu in. Like that's hoisin sauce with some other ingredients. It's just magic. Um, no stains, no sticking. Oh, I'm worried about it then. If, if it's not bothering you, I, I wouldn't spend the time butting with it. Um, I know there's unlimited options for this. Like any sauce, you can make like a red curry coconut sauce to put on this. You like seriously, like it's it's just crazy. Also, these would be really good. Actually, this batter would be really good if you have leftover juicer pulp from vegetables. You can make little balls. In healthy slow cooking, I have something like this where I take pulp. And I make little balls and I put it in a curried sauce. It's like a creamy curry sauce that you just make in the blender. It's stupid easy. But I think they would be really good dipped in the sauce and cooked like this. Uh, yeah, black bean sauce is also something. When you ferment those black beans, there's a certain flavor. But regular, you can get a can of fermented black beans that don't have gluten in it. You just have to make the sauce. It's another step. Oh, Marie, finding that Kite Hill grocery outlet for $3. I'm high-fiving you and hugging you. There's a grocery outlet in Asheville, which is about three and a half hours away. And when we go there for our like weekend getaways, we come home with a car load. Like I don't like buy out all the things, but because I haven't been, I go there maybe three times a year. By the time I get there, if I get one of all the things that are cool, we have a car load. And it's pretty awesome. Yeah, Barkeeper's Friend is really good. Oh, you're awesome. Um, 
and I, the first one I did was someone I didn't know, but I was able to talk to her because you know me, so you know I'm not being like, well, you should make my sauce and not make Christina's sauce. Because no, you should make all the sauces and find out what you like the best. But it's real easy. Most things that are like dressings or oils, substituting aquafaba for melted butter or um, like an avocado oil can often work well. And I would use chickpea or white bean aquafaba. And for those of you who are new to the game, aquafaba is a fancy word that means bean water. So literally draining that kind of sludge out of the can of chickpeas and saving it, put it in the ice cube tray, pop them out, put it in a Ziploc, and then you've got two tablespoons whenever you need it. See, I could have gone and put it in the microwave. But I, so Marie said, just quit saying I'm lazy because he, that's why I didn't do that. <laughs> I'm like, let me taste it. If it's not too strong and I don't think it is, it'll be great. Yeah, hoisin is magic. Ah, oh, <laughs> Amy's running to the market to buy more cauliflower. So my 10 cents tip is go to Trader Joe's or Aldi's, often, sometimes Lidl to get cauliflower where you can buy it per piece rather than per pound. And I am the annoying lady that you saw at Trader Joe's that was going through all the cauliflowers to find the biggest one. That's me. It doesn't have to be you, but I'm like, I do. it's also the best place to get winter squashes. You can pay like, I haven't gotten any this year, like $3.99 for a spaghetti squash this big or a spaghetti squash you can barely lift. So if you get there right when they open a new box, it's awesome. Um, grocery outlets, so fun. Oh, you have one down the street. I'm so jealous. I Someone was telling me about it when I was in Sacramento last week, but we didn't get to go. Um, oh, yeah, Justine says Tammy Kramer uses some grill mats that she puts on the Breville trays to make cleanup easier. I did see her, and we talked, and... We talked a lot. I saw her both days. We, we had dinner one day and lunch the next day. We almost had dinner the next day, but we ate early. Um, I love Tammy Kramer. So this it's fine to put down the silicone mats. Um, Dr. Steph does not love heating them. So you, your mileage may vary. I do bake in my silicone like muffin pan still. So I'm not telling you what you should do, but if you if you feel like you have some health issues, just double check that you feel good about it. I, I don't like cleaning Silpat mats. I find that they just never get, it's like um, a nut milk bag. It's just something that just does not gel with me really well. Oh, do I have an oat yogurt recipe? Yes, I do. Um, an apple, email me and I will email it to you. It is in Outrageous Oats, if anybody has it. It is not this kind of yogurt. So what we do is we make oat, a thick oat milk. Then when you're making yogurt from homemade milk, you have to heat it to a certain temperature. So you whisk it, because if you don't whisk it, it's all gonna burn on the bottom, because it's still, it's oatmeal in liquid form, <laughs> right? And then um, we let it cool, we put in our culture, we let it culture. And I put it in single jars and it almost looks like those old Yoplait yogurts where they put gelatin in them actually. So it looks more like a pudding than a yogurt like this. And I could see in the next year or so about doing a different kind of one. Nancy's yogurt does one that's pretty good. I all the, like Nancy's oat, Oatly Oat, they all have added oil. But I haven't really looked at exactly what they are. Um, ooh, Sherry says a new grocery outlet just opened in my area in Maryland. Maybe we'll have to check that out when we're driving through later next month. Oh, I'm so glad that you joined today too. Deep South Texas, yeah. And Christina does dislikes cleaning Silpat. Okay, so it's not just me. Like, see, with the, the nut milk bags, everybody loves them. But then all I see is that one piece of nut stuck in that bag that I know was stuck in there last year. And even though I've sterilized it, it doesn't make me feel any better. I'm fine mesh strainers all the way. 
And you know, with my parchment paper, some of it I can even put in the compost, but I, I just don't feel that bad about it. Maybe, you know. Oh, Carrie agrees with me on the silk hat too. I can never get them clean. They always just feel, and it's not that I never use them. I have like two, but that's the reason I don't use them all the time. Now, I've also seen where they have like silicone, it's almost like this material grates that you can put on top of things too. Oh, you do have outrageous. Okay, awesome. If you have some questions, let me know. Um, it, my oat recipe is not up on the site, mostly because people complain about it because they don't do exactly what it says and they're mad. So, and also they're expecting it to be like this and it's more of like tofu pudding, like that thick. It's even thicker than tofu pudding. Oh, I'm so glad you enjoyed it. This is, you guys just hung out with me while I made dinner in my pajamas. I feel like this is a big win for me. <laughs> and Amy says, I feel guilty for not using Silpat, but now I don't feel so bad. I feel the same way sometimes. Um, I do put it in our green waste bin, which is composted by the city. Um, oh, I'm not even going to put this one up, Apple. I'm going to let people go in the comments. I'm keeping my parchment paper close to my heart. Apple has a reason parchment may not be the best. Um, how long does it take to deny the herbs? I deny you, basil. No, I think you mean dry, <laughs> and I'm sorry. <laughs> I... I really have been people in too much the past two weeks. Um, so it can depend. Um, it can depend on if you live in a more humid or dry environment. It can depend on when it rained last on the herbs you just picked and put in the dehydrator. But I don't think about any of that. I just put it in a thin sheet on here. You know, like I don't put it on um, parchment paper. I just put it right on here. And I put it on 115 dehydrate overnight if it's not done i'll do it another 12 to 24 hours it's you're not going to over dehydrate something so it's okay um and real puts the pads in the dishwasher i've tried that too and they they still don't feel maybe it's what i've been putting on them uh oh hi janet it's awesome that you got to come join Oh, Marilyn, it was so nice for you guys to keep me company while I was making stuff from um, Vegan for Everyone. Don't forget, it's the last hours that you can buy it. So when you ask me tomorrow, you're watching this video, and you say, I'm just going to ask, can I get it? The answer will be no. And it's not my fault, it's Amy's fault. So Amy, don't you like the way I'm throwing you under the bus? Amy controls when it is open and closed and has made that. She's already programmed it in. There is no way to change it at this point. And if you've got a little past midnight tonight, Eastern Standard Time. So it's $9.99. There's over 40 recipes. I made four of them for you to watch. And if you're like, I don't know if it's worth it, go watch my four videos like Put it on quadruple speed or just watch it without the sound. Just skip to the end where you get to see the good part, where you get to see the food. I know, I hate that you guys can't be at my house for dinner. Um, let's see. Yeah, I've, I may have pajama week. I'm not sure. I don't think Cheryl will let me go. And I, I haven't put it up yet, but we're probably going live tomorrow at 1 to just kind of do our normal, are you afraid of the starch solution talk? But I bet you she won't let me wear my pajamas. And hey, Mary Ellen. Oh, I would love a pajama dinner party. You have no idea, that's just right up my alley. And it's only available until 9 p.m. specific time, midnight Eastern Standard, thank you. Because I thought there might be a little bit, I am blaming you, Amy. It's just because then tomorrow when everyone's yelling at me, like, I, I could not have possibly put it out anymore. I put it on social media, which I don't do a whole lot. I've been live four times. I've sent out an email about it every day. So, you know, I'm glad you love that I'm still in my pajamas. So do I. And I'm glad that they had summer weight 
Halloween pajamas. That is also a win for me. Oh, I'm so glad, Apple, that you got it for your mom. It's a long, she's a lifelong vegetarian, but new to vegan. That's great. And if she has some questions, just have her email me. Uh, yeah, PJ dinner party. Maybe we need to do, I don't know if Christina's still here, but maybe we need to do like once a month blogger dinner party in pajamas. So we could come up, we could each make a recipe. That could be a fun thing to do. Have a, like me, you, and Christina, or mix in a few people from the book. Oh, that's awesome. A PJ party up until the closing time would be fun. Like those old timey phone in donation shows. I think that I put in all the lives that I have today, um, but I haven't lost my voice like I have all the other day, so I feel good about that. Yes, for pajama party. Our, oh, we could call it PJ Snack Attack. I kind of like that. <laughs> and Christina says, yes, I have some cute pajamas too. Okay, see? This is where the magic happens when you... When you need a little sleep and you've been live way too many times in a day and you get a little like, I don't know, feisty. But anyhow, I'm gonna, um, I'm not gonna toss these into the other sauces because those are getting uncrispy. This is gonna be our dinner. So you guys, if I did um, a citrus tofu that was I cooked in the air fryer that was to die for, I did these which you know this may be one of my favorite things because i made a different one with a dry rub and i really like these so you you guys need to make this what else did i make today i made a mexican scramble and talked to you about how you can make oil-free tostadas crispy crunchy out of your air fryer it's been a little bit of an air fryer day but that, again that's just because it's right there that's what I like about having it right there. And if you notice, sometimes in the year, there'll be a smaller one, and then this one cycles back out. And then I made Dora's um, tomato soup, brothy soup with um, shells. And we toasted the shells, which blew my mind. So I've learned so much this past weekend. And that's just what not even 10 percent of the recipes that are in there there's some that are great that would take a little more effort um those of you that asked me to make some of those that would take a little more effort i'll sorry about that but i just can't do that many in a day and and cook for hours at a time um let's see what else we've got yeah i know i have a lot of delicious food and i did a class and i did all mexican food I'm filming my slow cooker class for Kathy's Cooking Club because I can't do a slow cooker class live. And I'm going to do all Mexican for that. So we're going to have stuff in the freezer and stuff to eat for the whole week. It's going to be brilliant. Yeah, no, I think it's delicious. And I love that you made a non-buffalo sauce. I will have to admit, when I saw spicy, I made the assumption that it was going to be buffalo sauce. Oh, you are so sweet. Thank you for hanging out with me. And Amy, thanks for like coming out and, and talking to everybody. So if you, if you go ahead and you get vegan for everybody and you're like, Kathy's gonna leave me hanging, you can email me. Now I will be traveling some in the next month. And if I don't answer you in like three to four days, if it's been a week, re-email me. It means I got a bunch of emails and I'm lost and drowning in it. Um, but I do want to answer you. So just know I'm not just saying that and then blowing you off. I really lost your email. Okay. Oh, Mona, you're so nice. Thank you so much. Um, it was nice spending a Monday with you guys. And Justine says I was amazing today. I will spend more days in my jammies. And I'm glad you guys had fun. It's been really fun hanging out with you guys and cooking some of this amazing food by some food bloggers that are awesome. Don't forget to go to Spa Betty, check out her other recipes. They're all gluten-free. And from Outrageous Oatmeals, she at the oat ice cream in there is Christina's recipe. So you guys may already be familiar with some of her work. Now go do something nice for yourself, 
If you're at home, you've had a long day at work, go put your PJs on. If you're on the West Coast, you still got a little more time. I don't know, maybe have a little cup of tea. If you can sneak out of the office and take a little stroll, do that. Pet a dog, say hello to someone. Just, just do something kind, okay? And I really, really, oh, the king shot, I just gotta get off her. Said, you're welcome to come to the beach and cook anytime you like, that is awesome. And Lydia says, thanks for putting, and it's not a bundle, it's just one ebook. So it's, you're getting one PDF, but all 40 recipes are in it, just so you know. And you're welcome, Debbie, Daria, Mary Ellen. Oh, and she appreciates the gluten-free recipes. Uh, it's always nice to spend time with you. I feel it has been years since I've seen you and hung out. Hopefully that will change. All right, guys, go and get a good night's sleep. And I'll see you guys tomorrow at one. If you want to come and hang out and listen to me and Cheryl talk about vacationing on the